Can everyone hear me okay? Hello? Can everyone hear me? Yes. So oh, I hear it. Okay, listen, there's something wrong with the Hangout. So I'm going to close it and I'm going to reopen it again. I think, well, ha hang on, let me see if I can fix it. Wait a second. Okay. Maybe I can fix it. Oh, no, okay, it looks like it's okay. It looks like it's working now. Yeah, there's definitely some technical problems with Google the last couple of days. All right, I'm going to just do a quick introduction and we'll get started. Can everyone just turn off your microphones for just a minute while I do the introduction? Okay? So everyone just, uh, if you could, mute your microphones for a minute. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Verbling. This hour, uh, I'm going to do the next in my Learning Through Pictures series. We're going to work on probably the last part of our food series, making something to eat. In Learning Through Pictures, you will learn vocabulary and more by asking questions about pictures. And we'll use that vocabulary uh, in an active way by telling stories. That way, you'll remember everything that you learn. Today we're going to tell a story about something that you make or is made for you in your culture. I'll give you an example in just a minute. That's a bit about my class. Here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour, and I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. Oh, and by the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate in my class. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means, rule number one, turn off your microphone when you're not speaking. That way, we can keep the noise to a minimum. Even if you don't hear it, we often get a lot of noise in the background, which everyone else can hear. So everyone, turn off your microphones uh, until you speak, OK? That means turn it off now. <laughs> By the way, you can turn it off at the top of the screen. And, and uh, when it's red, it's off. When the microphone icon is white, it's on. Rule number two is tune in to the new words. That means pay attention and use the new words you learn as actively as you can. The more you use the vocabulary, the more I can help you use it correctly, the more feedback I can give you. And rule number three is open up to your classmates. Just relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe, respectful place to practice your English. So that's a bit about me. If you want to stay in touch, I will give you a set of links at the end of class where you can follow me on, on Verbling. You can follow me on Facebook, too, Google+, read a tweet, see a video or an old class on my YouTube channel, or even schedule a private class directly with me. So that's a bit about me. And now I want to know a little bit about you. It looks like we have a full class. So, um, by the way, just in case you don't have the link, I'm going to put it right now in both chat windows for you so you can open up our notes. And inside the Verbling chat, I'll put it there as well. So everyone open that up. Yeah, it looks like it's there. And we're going to start. So we have a lot of vocabulary that we've done. We're going to see how much of the vocabulary we can use to tell the story. But since we've been talking about food, one of the best stories to tell is just how you make something. So in the last class, Daniel was nice enough to tell us about something that, that he makes or was made for him. So if you go down there to page three, you'll see unit two and Daniel's Spanish omelet. Daniel, are you there? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Daniel, without looking at what's written, do you remember what we learned about making, uh, do you remember the little story you told about making the omelet? More or less. More or less. Here's what I want, here's what I want to do. I want to use you as an example, okay? Because you've already told us a recipe, which is great. So I want you to tell the recipe again, and I'll help you. I don't really want you to look at it. I want you to do it from memory. But what's more important than the recipe is what you remember about this experience. Because everyone has an omelet, but not everyone has an omelet in Spain made by your mother. 
So I, I want to know about what that was like. So I want you to tell me about a time, maybe last Christmas. I want you to tell me an anecdote, a little story. And in the story, you're going to say how she actually made the omelet. By the way, think about the other classes we've done. We have the, the, the process of making the omelet from uh, the class before. We have vocabulary for fruit, a picture of fruit in the class before that. We had the class about, um, about in each of the classes, we've gone over location words like inside, on, at, near, under, over. So we've, we've covered those in a few classes. In the class before that, we had a big class about different things in the kitchen. So location words and vocabulary for the kitchen. So you could reuse a lot of that vocabulary like counter, blender, mixer, bowl, um, whisk, uh, refrigerator, cabinets, cupboards, all of those words uh, from the kitchen lesson. And before that, we had tastes, salt, salty, bitter, sour, sweet. Uh, and then before that, in the very first class, we had words for vegetables. So um, I don't think I updated the vocabulary list for all of this because I've been really, really busy. But if you followed a few of these classes, you can try to actively use some of that vocabulary. Okay? So what I want you to do, Daniel, let's try to take your omelet and just quickly, I don't want to spend the whole class, but let's spend about four or five minutes and turn it into a little story. So I want you to tell me about last Christmas when your mother was making her special uh, Spanish omelet. So okay. I'll ask you a few questions. You answer and we'll try to turn that into a story. Okay? okay. So this we're going to call this anecdote. We call this Daniel's anecdote. Hmm. Daniel's anecdote. I'll ask the questions, you, you answer them, and we'll turn it into a story. Okay, so what happened last Christmas? My mother made me uh, my favorite plot. Your favorite uh, dish? My, my favorite dish. Okay. It's, it's an Spanish omelette. My mother made me favorite dish. Favorite dish. Notice we say dish, not plate. Dish. Dish. Okay. I have a problem with this on um, plate. <laughs> dish is for, you know, the type of food, and plate is a physical object. Okay. So you eat off a plate, but you can have different dishes from different countries. It's like saying cuisine or something like that. Okay. Okay. But let's find out a little bit more about last Christmas. Who was there besides you? Uh, my, my, my whole family. Ah, okay, the whole family. All right. Um, celebrating the Christmas. Right. Christmas. Whole family was celebrating Christmas. Okay. I'm trying to get enough information that we can turn this into an anecdote. So if I know a little bit more about it, I can help you talk about it as if you're talking to a close personal friend. Oh, you won't believe what happened last Christmas. Well, first of all, <laughs> so right now it was last Christmas and your whole family was there celebrating Christmas. Um, so who, what, when, where, where was this? Uh, Where was in this? A little, in a little, uh, in a little city, village, of Spain, village for Spain. Uh huh. Well, uh, about about two thousand uh, people. Ah, okay. Live, a little bit. Live, live in in the village. Interesting. Uh, this is he, it called Fermosella. It's called. It's called Farmosilla. Can you write that in the chat window? F. 
Ye no, could you write it? Could you write it for me ah, in the chat okay, window? Okay. Because uh, it'd be faster. I just want to put it in the notes. You write it. Okay. Oh my God! Is that um, Ahmed? What are you doing back here, Ahmed? Is that you? Hello. Where have you been? Hello, everybody. I'm here. <laughs> Every day I'm watching. <laughs> where I where have you been? Uh, I've been busy. You have you have changed your schedule, uh, George. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> hey, listen. No, 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 no. Listen. I ha I have not changed my schedule. Verbling won't give me hours. So the only okay. the only time I can do it is early in the morning here in Portugal, and there's nothing I can do. The schedule was booked because and and oh, I I I was fighting and then I just gave up. So. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I am here now. Long time no see, Yuki. Yeah. Yuki, before you were my favorite student, Ahmed was my favorite. See, si. he's the he's the he's the other superhero. No, you, you kid. Ah, uh, I, I admit, I admit he's a real superhero. He's the other superhero. I, 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 I'd, glad to, I'd glad to uh, give him uh, uh, the name of superhero. No, no, you, you're definitely the superhero. Ahmed's no. the other superhero. <laughs> Ahmed, he's like the Yuki from 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 the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He's like the you from over there. And Ahmed, Yuki is like the you uh, from Japan. I like the, know like, Yuki. Like I know Yuki person. perfect. I yeah. know him, by the way. Yeah, I, uh, every day I wear glasses. Yeah, you know Yuki. You Why are the best <laughs> students in your class? Oh my goodness! And I didn't know you were there. Um, <coughs> I think there is Carmen as well. New Carmen's students. here. Yeah, she is uh, brilliant as well. She is brilliant. She's. She's almost at the superhero level. She's at the hero level. She's working her way up the chain. Alberto, uh, are, are you a hero too? I think you're a hero too. You've you've been upgraded. Yeah, Daniel, you're on I, your way. I, I'm Daniel's a hero, but way. I'm not brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant enough. Uh, okay, so Daniel wrote Farmacel. Farmacel, really? That seems like it's a, almost French. Farmacel. Is that is that a normal Spanish? Spelling from seems like eight it's kilometers to Portugal. How how long? In the in the uh, from eight kilometers from the border of Portugal. Eight kilometers from the border of Portugal. He's yeah. going to visit you, I think. Really? <laughs> you can from, invite it. Uh, from what's the what's the closest city in Portugal uh, ever? Was it the north or south? No. City. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna cross the border, what's the what's the nearest city? Um, Out of Miranda do Douro. Ah, okay. So it's in the north. Mm. You're up north. Ah, okay. Uh, in the uh, the Do Douro River. Right, where you have the Douro wine. Yum, Douro yes. wine. That's the best wine. <laughs> um. Okay, so Daniel, we're trying to get a few more details to turn this into an anecdote. We know when it happened, we know who was there, we know where it was. Okay, here's a one last question. I don't know if this is, will be enough, but we'll see if we, we can get enough details here. Daniel, um, what do I want to ask? Who, where, what? I need. To, I was going to ask something. Um, what was it like? What was it like? That day. What do you remember about that day? Uh, it's a. It was a happy day because we we were with people of my family. I I didn't see um, from from a long time. Ah, uh, okay. So the family together. For the first time in a long time, something like that. Okay, and finally, what happened that day? What do you remember about that day in particular? Because you were the one who said she made the omelet on Christmas. So, what happened that day that you remember? 
my mother was very happy because her her children mm -hmm. and her yeah um, grand grandchildren grandson grands grandchildren mm -hmm. mother was happy because he her grandchildren mm -hmm. uh, was mm, I don't know playing with her okay so she was playing with her grandkids yeah grandchildren grandkids, grandkids. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay anything else you remember about that particular day remember not all of us are from a village in Spain near the border of Portugal some of us are from places like New York City so imagine you're talking to someone who has no idea what it's like to live there like just the fact that you talked about the village has 2,000 people my street in New York had 2,000 people not even my street <laughs> my building in New York had 2,000 people right before I came to before I came here to Europe I couldn't even imagine being in a place without 2,000 people per house I mean it so when I say what happened what can you remember that only happened in that particular place so mother was playing with grandkids so, what else it's a plate so quiet <laughs> Ah. Only I only heard the scene of the birds. <laughs> okay, so it was very quiet, just birds. Uh, where I'm teaching at night is out in the middle of nowhere, in the fields. It's really far from the city, and there is no noise. There is nothing, except except the sound of the storks. You know what a stork <laughs> is? Yes. Stork is the a bird kind, that a kind, of, a kind of bird. brings the babies. The bird that brings the yes, babies. Yes, yes. And uh, <clears throat> a white a white bird. Giant white bird. And and at night, as I'm trying to get back on the train and get back to civilization, you can hear the storks. That they make this strange sound because they, the the male and the female, do this kind of thing with their beaks. So they're like doing this little ritual where they go tap 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 tap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. That's the only sound that I hear. Uh, other than that, it's quiet and you hear the wind. That's it. <laughs> and the sound of my loud student. It's strange. It is strange. A um, little different than New York. Well, here in New York, you hear taxi cabs and people shouting. Um, okay. Well, let's stop there. We have some information here. So here's what I want you to do, Daniel. You're going you're gonna to tell us a little anecdote. And in the anecdote, you're going to tell us the recipe for the omelet. So take a look at page three. I made a few notes about the anecdote. What happened last Christmas in general? In general. This is an experiment. I don't know exactly the right way to do this, but I'm trying it like this. So first we got some details there. So you know, we mother made me my favorite dish. The whole family was there celebrating Christmas in a little village in Spain with only 2,000 people. It was a happy day. The family was together for the first time in a long time. All of that is pretty good details. If you can think of anything else, you can add it. But then in the middle of telling your anecdote, you're going to say how she made the omelet. And that's what you did the week before. So Daniel. Um, why don't you give it a try? Why don't you give it a try? And then I'll step in and help if you need it. And then we're going to turn it over to the rest of you to, to share something from your own culture and, and something that you remember. Okay? But then why don't you give it a try? See if you can start with the details from the anecdote. Tell, tell us a little bit about that day. And then in the anecdote, tell us about the thing that your okay. mother made. Okay. By the way, if I were a good teacher, I would give you an example. But I'm not a good teacher. That's why I always say you're the teacher. <laughs> I can give you an example. So the problem is that no one ever cooked in my family. That's that's the problem. So I can't I can't I can't relate to it 
That's my that's my big problem. I'm just trying to think if I can give you an antidote about something. I really can't. I can't think of anything. Um, really, I can't think of. I I have no anecdotes about food. That's my problem. I shouldn't do anything <laughs> about food. All right, Daniel, you try it. You try it, and then I'll step in and help with your English if you need it. Okay. So, okay. Daniel, tell us about your favorite food or about something, uh, about a time you remember someone making something traditional from where you're from. And you're going to say, okay. oh, that reminds me of last Christmas. Go ahead, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, in the last Christmas, my mother made me my favorite dish. Uh, I... And I remember I that was... day. I remember that day well. <laughs> I remember that day well. My whole family was my whole family was celebrating Christmas uh, in a little bit uh, village in Spain called Fermoselle. Uh, it was a happy day because my mother made me my favorite dish. Uh, okay, mm, good, good. Tell us how she made it. Now uh, you can go through the it. steps. Yeah. Uh, I I read the, the recipe. Yeah, try to do it from memory. What would she do first, okay. and then, and after that, and after that, and finally? What would she do? Okay. I. I was with my mother. She she heard what he made me. <clears throat> Here, here's made a, me. One, one, one little suggestion, Daniel. Because we're talking about a recipe, yes. a recipe is something that you always make in more or less the same way. It's always more or less the same. So when you talk about a process that's more or less the same, um, you can talk about you can talk about it as a repeated action. In English, mm -hmm. a repeated action uses um, the simple past or the, the form with would, a conditional. In Spanish, it would be the imperfecto or imperfecto, however you say it. Mm -hmm. But in English, it's a little different. So you could say, well, first, she would peel, okay. right? So you can, you can talk about it as a repeated action. So when your mother would make her Spanish omelet, what would she do, Daniel? First, he he. Changed he or she? The she. She. <laughs> right. She. <laughs> what kind of mother do you have, Daniel? She take the ingredients for the omelet, for the omelet. Okay. Four or five eggs, a cup right. of ol olive oil, right. three potatoes. A half teaspoon of salt and one onion. Ah, okay. First, and what would she, she do? First, she she would peel the would potatoes. Peel? She would she peel. Would peel she would peel the potatoes. Peel, and peel, peel, peel. Peel. Because if it's first, wood, wood peel. There's no s. She would peel. Good peel. Okay. First, first she would she would peel. The potatoes and slide up the onion. Then she would put all of the ingredients into a pan with a cup of ol ol olive oil, extra virgin, and after that she would fry the mixture on the stove over a low heat, and then she would crack the eggs into a bowl and beat them. When the potatoes and onions are were, fried, were fried, were fried, because you were saying she okay, would in the okay. past. So when they okay, were fried, beat it, then beat it, them. She would the beat mix. them. She would beat them, them into the mixture, and then she would pour the mixture into a pan with a half teaspoon of olive oil. And after that, she would cook. She would cook the mixture in the pan on the on the stove over a low heat. And then she would flip 
the omelette over with a plate. And finally, depend on how you like how we would like it. On <laughs> how we like it, she would serve serve it according my to my taste. taste. Right. Could be well, well done, done or lightly cooked. I, I like well well done. <laughs> Like it well done, crispy, well crunchy. Done. <laughs> and then you could end by saying, so that's something that, that uh, so that's something that uh, she made last Christmas and it was delicious. Right, Daniel? Yes. There yes. you go. <laughs> All right. So that's a Spanish omelet. I want to know from the rest of you. Uh, so what I'm suggesting is if you tell it like a story with a few details about something you remember, It'll be a lot easier to recall in the future. The only food story that I can remember for some reason is when I was young, my father, who my father who never cooked and never sat down, when we were eating, he'd be standing up. He would never sit down in a chair. He'd eat standing up, right? And he never cooked, except on special occasions. He would make pancakes. So I remember when I was four years old, I remember I was four because we were living in a, in, a, in a house and then we moved when I was five. So we were in the old house. So I was definitely four years old, maybe three. I remember my father was making pancakes in his usual way, which was, pour, was, was you know, crack a few eggs, mix it with flour, right? He just kind of used an instant mix. And then he'd mix it into batter, pour it into the pan. And his way of making pancakes was showing off. So he wanted to show how high he could flip the pancake. Well, I'll never forget that he was flipping the pancakes. So they go up, catch them. Well, oh, he used to have a restaurant when I, before I was born. So he used to cook, you know, professionally. So he would, he would flip the can pancake higher and higher. Well, I remember one Christmas, I said I was three or four, he decided to show off. So he flipped it really high. And he went all the way up and stuck to the ceiling, and we couldn't get it down. And the pancakes stayed there for the rest of the day until he could get a ladder because it was stuck to the ceiling. And that's my my only food story <laughs> that I can remember. <laughs> and then afterwards, he made it. He made me eat it. No, I'm just kidding. That would be funny, though, right? All right. So, <laughs> who's got who's got a recipe? I'd like to know something. I mean. Tell us something that we don't know. Tell us something that's traditional from where you live, because we don't really know about uh, you know other cultures. It'd be very interesting. So who's got one they'd like to share? I'll help you with the English. You can we can go through the process of how to make it, and we can go through the anecdote if you'd like to tell it. But who's got something, preferably something traditional, something that we might not know about that you remember, something personal? Any volunteers? Besides brave Daniel, volunteers. No one. Maybe I will try. Go for it. Any any food. Uh, uh, you prefer uh, egg food? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't prefer no. eggs. I don't prefer eggs. But I prefer eggs. I, w I prefer something personal. I, I w I'd like to know something that. Um, I'd like to know something that um, you know the rest of us might not know about. I mean, uh, Japanese cuisine, for example. If yes. I, I, you know, it's foreign to me. I I'm I'm learning about it because we can buy a few things here in Portugal. So mm -hmm. you know, I just know mi uh, miso and sake. That's all I know. Cook with the miso and add a little sake to it, and whatever you're making is good. That's all I know. Uh. What what do you remember when you were growing up? What do you remember? Did someone make something for you in particular? Uh, maybe I I remember uh, I remember Japanese uh, breakfast uh, and 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 very um, my mother uh, 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 my mother is good at cook good at cooking Japanese simple food Japanese mm -hmm. rolled om omelet. Uh -huh. <coughs> Everyone makes omelets. I can't believe it. Okay, uh, but the Japanese uh, omelet is very special. Uh -huh. uh, it it um, it um, it omelet, but it is um, rolled rolled omelet. 
Japanese omelette is rolled. Uh, it's a classic dish in Japanese uh, lunches uh, and breakfast. Uh, and the mother put, uh, mother put the tamagoyaki into a lunch box for their children. Uh, it's a very special, special, special Japanese food, but, but, but it is a home, home cooked uh, dishes. Uh, and uh, firstly, uh, um, uh, firstly, um, uh, you'd better to prepare special uh, pan, uh, mm -hmm. um, which, which, uh, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which is, um, uh, which form is, which form home looks like, uh, um, uh, how to say? Mm, no, no, not not uh, not rounded. Not not square. Not, not uh, yes, squared. Ah. Uh, yes. Uh, so special pan for the tamagoyaki is it, shaped like a square. Uh, uh, what, what, what was the word you said? Ta tamayaki. Tamagoyaki. Oh. Ta tamago. <laughs> Tamago means it's egg. Yaki means it, 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 uh, it's a uh, band. It, it's a uh, um, grilled. Grilled. Cook. Oh. Uh, no, grilled. Ta yes. Tamago, tamago yaki. Okay, got it. Tamago got yaki. It. Tamago yaki. Got it. Uh, uh, it, yeah, it's a simple food. Uh, you, you, you prepare, uh, firstly, uh, uh, you t turn the heat. Uh, and um, and uh, um, warm the pan uh, mm -hmm. shaped like square mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, you uh, and mix the mix the eggs by the way just just a quick word here um, mm -hmm. in american english in american english we usually not usually but we can also say skillet for pan so uh, British English frying pan in American English, we can say frying pan, but we also you'll hear the word skillet a lot. So skillet. in the notes, in the notes, I'm going to write the word skillet, just so you can see what you you can see the other word. But it's okay to say frying pan. Mm -hmm. So you need a special so, square skillet to make ta tamagoyaki. Yes, firstly you stir up the eggs in the in the bowl. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, and then, you beat the egg. You beat, beat the egg. Ah, firstly, beat to the eggs yeah. and put them into the bowl and mm -hmm. just stir up, stir up them. Just stir, stir up, them. Stir up, stir up the eggs. So, but isn't isn't beating this stirring is beating? So, if you're doing this, aren't you're just beating the eggs? Do you mean that, or you mean something special? No, uh, just uh, uh, just uh, stir up the, the eggs, and uh, and uh, you you can uh, you you can add uh, add the mixture. Uh, uh, the dashi dashi is Jap <laughs> <laughs> dashi is the Japanese special sauce. <laughs> D a d a s h i dashi. Yes, dashi is made of water and um, bonito. Fried bonito. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Ah, uh, mm, uh, 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 dried, dried bonito. W what is bonito? Bonito is fish. Oh, oh, okay. Tuna. Tuna, tuna, tuna. 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 Oh, yeah. okay. Tuna, tuna. It's funny. Is bonito in Spanish too? I think it's... bonito is English. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I've never I never heard of that in my life. Ah, so ah, so fried 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 and sliced tuna. Uh, you you can make a soup. Uh, no no consomme. <laughs> soup uh, soup uh, dashi. Uh, from I, I, sorry sorry I don't mean to interrupt. Just one second. If I go to Wikipedia, it it doesn't say tuna. It says, hold on. I don't think I can share my screen, but let me see if I can. No, I can't share my screen. If I go to Wikipedia, it says it's a fish. No, a bonito, bonito. It's bonito. It's bonito, not tuna. Bonito. It's not it's tuna. family. The family it shares is with is the it's mackerel, not tuna. the tuna. Bonito. 
But Yuki Bonito is a, a Japanese word. No, it's it, it, not a Japanese word, it's English. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, but you, pretty. I, I've no, never... I, I found it in dictionary, English dictionary. No, he's right, he's right, he's right. But I'm right. I've never, I've never heard this in my life, but you're right. It's an English word. Uh, it says, it says, although bonito is a, is a, a, an adjective common to Portuguese, it is yeah. not clear whether the name of this fish is related to being beautiful. It's, it is not, it's not clear whether it's the Arabic banith is the origin of the Spanish term or vice versa. Fish so you can catch it in the Pacific uh, Ocean. So. Maybe you don't know, <laughs> but, but it's very, very, very popular in Japan. Uh, ah. Bonito. Uh, we we make we make a special special uh, dried uh, dried bonito, uh, and uh, we shave it to 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 the material for the soup dashi. Oh, uh, dorado? What is dorado? It's dorado and and dorado. But can you write this stuff so I can? I, I dashi. Can, dashi, I got. Yes. Okay. And the other one is? Uh, yes. And and you uh, and uh, put 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 the mixture. Uh, put uh, sorry. Put put the dashi and the sake and the sugar and the salt and the soy sauce to the mixture. Mixture of eggs. Okay. Eggs. Hang on a second. Hang on. Let me see if I got this straight. <laughs> First of all, you need a square skillet, right? Yes. Then you turn on the heat and warm the skillet or the pan. Uh, sorry, firstly you oh. have to stir stir the eggs in the bowl, um, and and mix, stir stir up the, the eggs and add 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 the dashi, uh, sake, sugar, salt, and soy sauce to the mixture. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Dashi is cons consists of what? Water and what? Dashi is what? And, uh, dashi what, is, is, what is dashi made of? Dashi is a soup. Um, dashi is a um, basic soup for Japanese food. So it is uh, liquid. Right. Yes, it is, pro, uh, it, is, uh, it, it is made from uh, water, boiled water and, uh, uh, and uh, sliced dried bonito. Sliced dried sliced Dried bonito. bonito. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, you uh, you have to prepare dashi beforehand, and just you uh, just uh, powder powder. That you can buy a powdered uh, dashi in the Japanese stores. So okay. <laughs> it is more convenient if right. you have a, a powdered dashi. So but, so but then you're gonna add then you're gonna add you said sugar sake. Sugar, sake, and salt, and soy sauce. And but uh, but, but if you, you you have nothing, just just add a salt, mm -hmm. and maybe white liquor or, or white wine, maybe. Really, white yes, wine? Yes, yes. Uh, we 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 do we, we do in such a way. We, we make a uh, uh, tamaweki. How about, how about vodka? Can we put vodka in? Vodka is too strong. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so it, it, no flavor. I think yeah. I think white white wine is better to use. What if we just have the vodka and we and we forget about the dashi and we forget about the eggs? Just drink vodka. Is that? Eh. It's another way. You All cannot right. cook good cook. <laughs> you you will sleep maybe. <laughs> so after the drinking book. And add sugar, salt, add sugar, and sake, salt, and soy sauce. Okay. <laughs> and turn on the turn on the uh, and turn the heat and, uh, mm, and warm the pan. Warm the pan. Okay. And uh, you uh, uh, and oil. Mm -hmm. How to say? Uh, and coat pan. the I coat the pan with oil. Good. Yes. Good word. Coat the pan with oil. With what kind oil. of oil? What kind of oil? Uh, um, any oil is okay, but okay. Uh, but I think uh, uh, salad oil. Salad oil? Okay, so olive oil is salad oil, isn't uh, it? How to say? Uh, olive, well, it's, olive it oil is okay, but I think olive oil has a uh, 
Um, it's too thick? Yes, maybe. I don't know. Um, but every uh, oil is okay. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, just uh, you you uh, you put put the oil in into the pan because uh, be, uh, in order to um, smooth in order to smooth the uh, in order to uh, in order to be able to remove the uh, omelet afterwards. Right. Easily. Okay. So uh, and and after pour uh, the mixture into the pan. Okay, mm -hmm. and and scramble it in in the scramble it in, in the uh, pan with with chopsticks. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, how do you say chopsticks in Japanese? Uh, hashi. Hashi. Okay, got it. <laughs> scramble it with hashi. Easy word to remember. Hashi. Hashi. hashi uh, so dashi. Hashi, dashi, and sake. Okay, got it. <laughs> so yeah, it would be it would be lightly cooked scrambled scrambled eggs, and after that, uh, push the uh, push the mass of scrambled eggs uh, to one side of the pan mm -hmm. with uh, uh, a spa spatula. Okay, so put it to one side with a spatula. Okay. Yes. Yes. And after that, you. Uh, Again, you uh, again add the oil into the pan and spread it uh -huh. uh, in the main space uh, in the in the pan. Okay. And after again uh, again pour pour the mixture uh, uh, into the into the pan and spread it. W which mix which mixture the the more of the original. Uh, uh, you have to put the mixture, not not all. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. A little, a little, <laughs> and uh, and uh, same process. You uh, you uh, you uh, uh, you will make make a uh, uh, scrambled eggs and uh, and roll it, uh, uh, roll it and fold it. <laughs> ah, okay. Fold it and push push the mass of scrambled eggs to. Uh, to one side of the pan again. Okay. Again, again, roll the, again, pour and make, make scrambled eggs and roll uh, again, again, and you have a rolled omelette. How, how many of these little rolls should you put in the pan when you're uh, maybe done? Maybe ten times, uh, five times. So you'll end up with. Three or about... four, four times, maybe. <laughs> oh, okay, so with about. It, uh, until it uh, until it be, it became a uh, rolled, quite rolled uh, omelet, like a, like a rolled sushi. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And it. after that, you, uh, you you take out the uh, rolled, rolled rolled eggs uh, from pan, and uh, do you know uh, bamboo bamboo mat for preparing right, sushi? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes? Uh, yeah, you, yeah. Um, prepare the, thing the bamboo. You, the, thing, the thing you use to roll the sushi inside. Yes, it. yes, 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 yes. Prepare the bamboo mat uh, uh, on the on the desk on the on the table. And not, your, not your desk. <laughs> uh, on the table. On the table. Uh, okay. And place the place the uh, rolled omelet uh, on the on the bamboo mat. Okay. And uh, using your hand, uh, wrapping. I wrap, wrap the uh, sushi mat, uh, wrap the bamboo mat, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and cover, 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 cover roll the omelet with uh, with bamboo mat. Okay. And so, so, so you're you're wrapping the eggs inside yes. of the bamboo mat. You're yes, rolling yes, it up. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, and. And just uh, just cool the cool the uh, cool the uh, rolled omelet in such a in such a um, position. position. Yes, uh -huh. in such a position. And uh, you uh, and and you and wait uh, maybe uh, ten minutes. Um, I don't know, uh -huh. fifteen minutes. <laughs> okay. A little. And after this, you uh, you can open 
uh, you can open open the uh, bamboo mat, mm -hmm. and you will see the very beautiful uh, rolled uh, omelet. Okay. It, it's a it's a tamagoyaki. Uh, there you go. <laughs> tamagoyaki. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and right. uh, and before uh, eating, maybe you can you can put uh, you you can uh, uh, you, maybe you can direct you can eat directly uh, tamagoyaki, but uh, but maybe you can also uh, add some some soy sauce uh, to to uh, soy sauce before eating. Okay, so it can be served with soy sauce. Yes, maybe. Uh, but soy sauce is all uh, usually on the table <laughs> <All right. laughs> in Japanese <laughs> dining. So it can be served with soy sauce or eaten as it is, as is. Yes, yes. Ah, very good. So that is the ta tamagoyaki. tamagoyaki. Tamagoyaki, yes. Got it. Tamagoyaki. Okay, everyone, your homework is to make a tamagoyaki, <laughs> make one, and then bring it to class tomorrow to show Yuki. Maybe. Okay? I'll, I'll put the uh, uh, photos, tamagoyaki, <laughs> maybe after you, you, you can see. I saw a link somewhere. I don't know if that's what it was. Hold on. Maybe the link was something else. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Oh, no, that, that's a link to Pali. No, no, sorry. Wrong link. Okay, I thought that was someone showing a tamagoyaki. Maybe All right, very show. good. Very good. Listen, we're, we're, not, we're not done with you completely Yuki because we're going to turn this into an anecdote because I want to know about someone about the first time that someone made this or you saw them make it but but let's see if we, we've got time maybe we can get one more um, recipe and before the end of class so does anyone have anything traditional particularly traditional from where you're from uh, if so I can help you talk about how to make it uh, but maybe we can just talk about get some ideas too. You don't have to actually go through the whole process today. But I'm sorry, but Ahmed, can you tell me something traditional where you live? What, what, what's the traditional food where you're from? You don't have to talk about the description, I mean how to make it, but just what do people, what's something special maybe that people would eat there? Uh, yeah, okay. Because I know uh, nothing. In I know, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I know like, nothing like about rice. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, uh, most uh, of uh, Saudi uh, eat rice uh, with uh, any type of meat, fish, um, mm, chicken, the matter. Uh, but uh, as for me, because I am half uh, Thai and half Saudi. So I like Thai food more. Half what in Saudi? I'm sorry, half? Half, half Thai. Yes. yes half Thai. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's, that's an interesting mixture. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. You... you Listen, you could you could create a whole chain of restaurants based on that mixture, Thai and Saudi fusion. I think you've got I think you've got an entrepreneurial venture waiting for you, Ahmed. <laughs> okay, I have to think about Thai it. food is very dis is very distinctive. Think about it. Think about it. Um, let me just see. Uh, Renat, are you there, Renat? Hello, Renat, are you there? Renat, your microphone is on, but I don't hear you. Okay. Well, Renat, if you get your microphone working, say hello. And then I've got Pauli. Uh, what is it? Pauli? Paul? I, I didn't understand. Oh, yes. Uh, I have uh, two surnames, Paul oh. Aslo. <clears throat> and uh, my uh, first, uh, my famous <laughs> what, what? surname is Pauli. Paul is uh, uh, names uh, in uh, in English. Paul. What, what do I call you? Uh, I call from uh, Hungary. What What do I call you? What do you want to be called? Yeah, uh, I don't understand you. <laughs> 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 
What name do I call you? Ah, uh, Polly. Polly. Hi, Polly. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I know nothing about Hungary. Tell oh. me, tell really? me, what is something traditional that you uh, make in Hungary? Yes, uh, we have uh, some uh, traditional uh, dish. For example, uh, goulash. Goulash is a soup with meat, uh -huh. uh, with um, a beef meat, and uh, we often uh, make uh, uh, another soup. The name of this soup is uh, halászlé, fish soup, uh, and other Hungarian uh, dishes, um, for example, uh, did you did you anything uh, other Hungarian uh, dishes? Uh, I, I I know nothing about it. I can't <laughs> pronounce them. I don't know what they look like. I've never been to a Hungarian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Could you just uh, say say the name of the the soup again? Say the name soup. for me. Yes, holasli. Ho holasli. Holasli is the fish soup. Okay. Uh, what, what, what does holasli mean? Uh huh. What does it mean? Does it mean fish? Yes. Uh, we oh, okay. often uh, make uh, these uh, soup with uh, two different kind of uh, fish. Right. Uh, first is a uh, point. I don't know what is the name in English, and uh, uh, sometimes we put uh, uh, one more type of uh, fish. Mm -hmm. In our soup, uh, we often uh, make with this soup with uh, uh, a high uh, with paprika and uh, um, a spicy. Not a spicy. How can I put it? The paprika with a very hot flavor. Yes, hot spicy. paprika. Spicy. Spicy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, the. What is what is the difference is uh, with the other uh, fish soup? Okay, uh, I can I can explain. Uh, the first uh, difference is, is uh, we uh, cutting uh, uh, very small parts the uh, fish and after we uh, pushing uh, out uh, an, a filter. <laughs> Theater? Uh, theater? Theater, filter, filter. Theater, like when theater. you go to see people performing plays? Theater? Uh -huh. uh, not theater, filter. 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 Oh, filter. sorry. Filter, filter, filter. Got it. Yes. Got it. This uh, soup <laughs> is uh, very. Uh, oh, I never uh, explain my. Uh, traditional dishes for isn't it for great dinner. that you're here? <laughs> now, <laughs> now you have the opportunity. Isn't that great? Oh yes, very good. Uh, so our soup is uh, very uh, dancey with 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 uh, much of dance. Very dense. Very, very dense. dense. Ah, yes. Okay. After uh, we put one more one uh, we put more uh, other fish. Mm -hmm. uh, without uh, pushing out the filter, and uh, these these uh, two uh, different uh, type uh, fish is uh, uh, our uh, soup most uh, uh, differences than other fish soup. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, I'm not sure I understand it 100 percent, but here's what here's what you could do. If you look at, um, do you have the uh, the shared document, Polly? The one that we're looking at, the learning through um, the learning through pictures document. Do you have that in front of you? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Just a moment. Well, you, you don't have to look at it now. I was going to say, what you could do, because we're going to have a class tomorrow at the same time. You could look through on page three, and sure. Renat. Renat, this is for you too. You can look at page three just to see how Daniel, he didn't just start by saying his recipe. What he did was he started actually on page five. We learned the process of making an omelet. Mm -hmm. and, and then 
on page um, three and four, you can see how Daniel used that to describe something particular, the, the kind of omelet that his mother used to make. So you could use that as a model to help you organize how to explain. You've explained it a little bit, but you can use that as a model because he's got some good vocabulary there, like, for example, all of the little connector words, like first, then, after that I'm going to put them in bold, okay. and then, um, when, and then. All these connector words are really good to talk about the process. So I'm putting those in bold so you can see them better. Uh, hang on just a second. And you can refer back to the make something to eat picture, which is on page five. By the way, there's something which I've been meaning to do, which is to add the vocabulary to our vocabulary list. And phew, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do it, but I'll try. I've been really, really busy lately. But we have a vocabulary list, which is on page two, where it says word list. But I have not updated it in a while, so I need to go back and add the vocabulary to it. Right now, only the fruits and vegetables are there, but there's a lot of other words I need to add. So I will try my best to do it tonight before I go to bed when I come home. So what you could do is use Daniel's, uh, use Daniel's um, recipe as, as kind of a, a model just to see how you can organize um, the procedure to be able to talk about it. Okay, we have a general idea, but you can use that. And tomorrow it would be good to talk about a time when someone made it. Or, um, because if you can turn it into a story, you'll not only remember these abstract words like first, then, after that, next, finally, etc., and little details like skillet and pan and direction words like to the left, on the right, roll it over, flip it. You'll, you'll not only remember all those words, but it'll be in a very convenient form. It'll be in the form of an anecdote. It's much easier to remember things when it's a personal story. So what I would suggest to do, what I suggest doing is go home, look at Daniel's as an example. Now I can see, I can see your link, Hazale. I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> but I can see it. It's like it's like soup with a with a big fish in it. <laughs> <laughs> Holasli. Holasli. Oh, okay. Holasli. Got it. Oh yeah, very interesting. It does it does look a little bit like it looks a little bit like some stuff that they make here in Portugal too. It doesn't look that that unusual. But it's a lot thicker. Yeah, it's definitely a lot thicker than what they would serve here. Ah, oh, very interesting. Good link. So my suggestion is, what I suggest is go home, take a look at Daniel's uh, as a model, right? Use some of those bold words, the words that I put in bold on page four, to help you organize the process. And think about it as an anecdote, as a personal story. I told you a little anecdote about my father making pancakes because it's something I can't forget. I didn't go through the process of how you make pancakes, but I told you a little story. So if I could put the process, the recipe, inside of that anecdote, I would be, or you would be much more likely to remember all those little details. So try it. We can then listen to it in class. I can give you feedback or write it up. With Yuki, I wrote everything down. So Yuki, you've already got it written down for you on page three. And then let's see how it sounds tomorrow after you've had a little bit of time to practice. So Yuki, for yours, if you can think about an anecdote, a time when someone made it, I don't know, maybe this is something your mother used to make during the holidays or something like that. I don't really know. If you can think of an anecdote, it'll be a little bit easier. And maybe we can take those 15 steps that we wrote down stir the eggs in a bowl, add dashi, add sugar, blah, blah, blah. Maybe we can reduce those to a few less steps because it sounds like it's not that hard to make. Uh, but I added 15 steps because I was just writing everything you said. So maybe we could condense it a little bit and tell it as more of a story. So I'll leave it up to you to give it a try if you want. Yes. Um, all right, we're going to have to stop uh, right now, but... Carmen and Alberto and Renat.
We're still we're still waiting. And 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 Ahmed, if you've got if you want to tell us about a a, a Saudi Thai fusion dish, <laughs> we still got time for you tomorrow. I'd really like to know uh, something special that they make where you live and how you make it. So use Daniel's as a model, and let's see how it sounds tomorrow. And maybe I'll try to come prepared with a good example as well to show you how to put it together as a story. Okay, we're going to stop now. Any questions or comments, as you know, you can always reach me at these links, at Verbling, Google+, etc. I'll put it in the Verbling chat for you. Okay? So, that's it for now. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow at 9 GMT for the great short stories and at 10 for the, the second part of this class, Learning Through Pictures. Bye for now, everyone. See you next bye -bye. time. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care. See you.